Boom. All right. Here Today. We, here we go. We're going to make a million bucks, right? <laughs> multiple For somebody. Millions, multiple millions. All right. So somebody, there's treasure down in the bottom of this tank somewhere <laughs> for somebody, dude. It's for the sharks. All right. All right. All right. Let's get right to it. Million dollars, man. Somebody out there, some of these ideas you could do yourself. Oh, easily. And I guarantee it's not some fairy tale. You could actually start making a million bucks a year doing this. Yeah. And some of them was damn it manufacturers. Let's get together. <laughs> the uh, ones that have the, uh, the resources. Yeah. We were just discussing actually there was like, I could have done 45 of these on my own. <laughs> and it was just by going through the categories on the website saying, why don't they make this? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand. This thing pisses me off. So if you're ready for your million idea, the million dollar idea or one or two, here we go. Shoot. All right. Number, number one. one. For me, you better give them uh, what's up YouTube. Oh, what's up YouTube? We... I've been late twice now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. We're going to pick that in. Jeffrey Krupper's got us. All right. Number one for me uh, is I really wish they'd make a salinity probe that works. Like, oh. there is nothing I want more than to just drop a probe into my, like, mixing bin or even, even just the monitor for my tank and trust that it is the salinity and I don't have to, like, angle it and bubbles and, you know, calibrate and all this other crap. Just make me a salinity probe that works. Yeah, I don't know. It ah. must be a super big challenge because be. uh, I have not seen anybody do it well yet. And part of it might be the cost. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. I know people out there would pay for one that mm -hmm. would work. Mm -hmm. Like, cause it is frustrating. It's like you calibrate it, it's yeah. off to the side, you get yeah. the bubbles, you do the whole thing, I do it all perfect. It yet, just drifts. No matter what, it doesn't match my refractometer, actually doesn't even match my calibration solution. Mm -hmm. The calibration solution doesn't match. Uh, so which one of these things do I trust? Yeah. And the one that drifts is not it. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So yes. I do uh, want one. I think everybody would like that. Yeah. If you could make a salinity probe mm -hmm. It works all the time, and you could really trust million dollar idea for oh, sure. I wonder if electric, electrical conductivity is the way to go instead. I, what well, is reading well, electrical right. conductivity to some degree? Giving it in a terms that we understand. There are other styles of probe out, out there yep. than the ones that are common to aquarium industry. Yep. They just cost a lot more. A lot more. So, and there might be just some other things they can do, but let's see. All right, number one for me, Woo. I guess number two. Yeah. If you could do this, I don't think it's a million dollars. I think it's several. Several millions? Yes. An evolution of this stupid protein skimmer. <laughs> okay, the protein skimmer today looks the almost the same as it did when I <laughs> entered the hobby, or, or at least BRS. It's a cylinder with a pump on it. And with air, air drop. And yeah, that's it. nothing has really changed no. and in a decade plus. Like, there's no better way to do this. And there is, I'll show you in a second. But we, I mean, but we've learned so much about, now that we've learned so much about how they operate and what makes a skimmer or a skimmer work and how to adjust it, there's got to be the next evolution. Coming. I've got six ways to evolve oh, the skimmer here. You went even better. If you do these things, you will be rich. Okay. All right. Here we go. Number one. Build in the uh, uh, CO2 recirculating in a media mm. in a safe manner. No more DIY, mm. no more trying to do these things and it gets wet and then sends a bunch of, uh, you know, essentially kelp water in your tank. Yep. No. Build the CO2 recirculating design into the skimmer. It will now regulate the pH for you better than probably anything else out there. Save Get you the media. solenoid into it, not use a ton of media. The skimmer mm. will now no longer be the primary function of just removing turds. It will be the solution why you maintain 8.3 all the time in your tank. Oh, yeah. And especially what we're learning more and more about skeletal growth and, and skeletal structure, uh, we're doing ourselves a disservice. We're doing our corals a disservice by not trying to achieve 8.3. We'll have a conversation about that later. Oh, yeah. The pH thing, so overlooked in a manner almost everybody doesn't understand. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we've had before is, well, we kind of survive up down to the 7.8. Yep. But if survival is the goal, uh, I, I think we need to move past. All right, so uh, that alone, man, that one number thing, if you build a skimmer that has a circulating uh, CO2 it. thing in it, you'll blow everybody out of the water. All right, number two, adjust the collection point uh, rather than the water level, mm. end of the wedge piper game. Okay, so think of that hang on the back, especially the Reef Octopus 1000, BH1000 or what have you. It's got a box, there's this chamber of bubbling water, and all I have to do is lower the box to collect uh, more or raise the box to collect less. Let me tell you why this matters so bad, yeah. so much, right? Okay, so uh, raise your hand if you've had this problem before. 
So I go and I look at my skimmer, it's dry, wet, whatever, mm -hmm. but it's not collecting the way I want. So I go tune that little thing and then it kind of looks like it's going to collect, but it really takes it like you know, 15 minutes to stabilize around this yeah. new adjustment. I yeah. really don't know if it worked or not. And I'm constantly tuning it up. Oh, and an down, eighth of an inch and then walk away and yeah. do something then come back and be like, ah, it was too much. You strangle it. <laughs> you know, like, stop, start working. All right, so no. Now if I go and I grab the cup instead, so creating a stable amount of foam, it's just not enough to go over the edge. Just lower cup, the cup down. Down. Mm. Foam over the edge. That Didn't change easy. anything. Super instant, immediate results worked. Yes. Design should be like that. That's easy. Uh, and that comes from actually Dell Tech, bravo to like the MC600 or whatever I used oh, at one back point in time. Yeah. yeah, it was this exact thing. With like, the, with the oh, corner, it's not working. Corner oh, wedge. It's lowered a little bit. Oh, all of a sudden it works. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, so uh, DC to adjust air or wet or dry. And I'm not gonna say that, and that's kind of part of the whole thing, but this is part of the matrix. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. we learned that uh, wet and dry doesn't come from a wedge pipe. Wet and dry comes from the ratio of organics yep. to air. You know, and I've seen it now at home actually. I've, I've seen it where the, the foam is so thick that it's like pouring, almost pushing the lid off, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, normally you go wet judge the wedge pipe, maybe do your little like uh, oil trick or whatever. But instead I just add more air and then the, the foam gets, gets thick or thinner and becomes wetter, mm. removes more organics and doesn't uh, be uh, just like ooze out of everything. Yeah. All right. Mm. All right. Oh, I mean, even with that more, uh, oh, you might already have one. Go ahead. Go to okay. the next one. I kind of read okay. your paper. The next one here is internal recirculating. Yes. Okay. Right? So recirculating used to be External, like- External, uh, that's all it was known for, right? You may pay for so many uh, excess like pump, uh, plumbing, plumbing pieces and, yeah. and all that sort of Worry garbage. about it. I mean, more people were turned off from, uh, from recirculating skimmers because of the connotation that they're supposed to be external, which automatically means like, well, now I've got a source of water and a leak point outside of my tank. Why would I want that? Yeah, so uh, recirculating. So what that will give you now is what happens when you adjust the air up and down with either an air valve mm -hmm. or uh, with uh, even the DC pump. Yeah is I'm not only adjusting the organics in the air, but I'm, I'm adjusting like the flow rate of water through the skimmer at the exact same time. Now, Separate if I use a recirculating two. design, it's only adjusting the amount of air bubbles I'm doing, and a separate pump will actually adjust the amount of organics I feed into the skimmer. Hmm. Super, super easy, much more, uh, the problem is, is like, I wanna make the changes and I want to have them have a predictable result. I want to know that when I add more air, it will make it wetter. When I uh, take away uh, air, it will make it drier. End of story. I don't want this compact like, matrix of things that happen yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, inside the skin mm. when you make a single change. All right, and for God's sake, Put the actual feed pump on the recirculating skimmer. Don't make me go buy another one. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Just send it with, please. Yeah, just put it on I mean, the thing. And the one that you suggest, yeah. whatever it is. I mean, there's nothing like that recirculating skimmer that we have on the 750XXL. Um, it's got a Varios 4 on it, you know, that as the recirculating pump, we had to buy a uh, Varios 2 to feed the thing. So uh, why don't you just in include it? Mount it on or there. mount it on there. It look nice, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't... Yeah. I, why you make it is only so you can artificially keep the price down. Yeah. You know, you get sticker shock. I'm gonna have to buy the damn pump <laughs> anyway, man. So just put it on there and let me know. If you go look at our skimmer selection on our website and you go to the recirculating uh, skimmer section, there is maybe five. So uh, and, and they're not designed this way. Yeah. No. So All right. Want to make money? Go make us some more skimmers. All right. Number five. Still on skimmers. We're here, still on this one I know, skimmer I know idea. This, I, I want to see an evolution of skimmers, and if you do this right. Like everyone, if somebody followed all of these things, everyone mm. out would, would go buy a new skimmer. Would you Beverly Hillbilly it though and put it all in one skimmer? I would make the epic, like the most you know, epic. It's got yeah, CO2 like recirculating. It's got ex uh, the uh, the dual pump. The Thor God of Thunder skimmer. <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah, I think you should do it all. Off. Yeah. All right, adjustable neck size. Oh, okay. that's really cool. Yeah. All right, so this is why this might like this is one of those things that's really interesting actually. Mm. So. If I'm pumping in 600 liters a, an hour of air through the skimmer, yep. where does that air go? It's going out the lid. It's going out the lid, yeah. right? Okay, so I got tons of air, I've optimized for this thing, I got tons of Just organics, and it's going straight out through the neck. It has to go yep. through the neck. So if I'm doing too much air, Basically, it's like that bubble one. I'm just blowing through it too, uh, too, much, too much and air. all the bubbles just pop. Yep, we yep. know what it looks like. It's just like this boiling pot of bubbles that never does anything, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so if I open up 
the size of the neck now, the air velocity is now much slower yeah. because it's coming out of a much, instead of a, like a one inch tube, it's coming out of a four inch tube, the velocity of air is now much slower. So for your really low organic skimmer or tanks, like, Dropping you know, the, the smaller diameter. Yep. Yeah. And so you can adjust to the stage you're tanking. And this is a big piece of it. Yeah, it grows with you. Grows with you, just like that skimmer. Uh, the, so we adjust the air, we adjust the you know, mm -hmm. size of the neck, the velocity is coming through it, how much foam you need. Some of them, does, you know, just to produce a little bit, we'll need a coffee can size, uh, essentially, of foam to, to do anything. Yeah. Some of them, like a little, like a, like a thread needle. Yeah, uh, garden hose thimble. or something. Yeah, garden hose. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if you can adjust these things down, Boom. Mm. When now the skimmer will go with you through the entire life. When I plug it in day one, I got two clownfish and a couple things of food, it will work. When I got 30 fish in there and I'm feeding three times a day, Take that same skimmer still works. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Ryan Thompson says, Kyle already has changeable neck sizes. Mm -hmm. I've seen one. I've seen one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but we want uh, more. All right. All right. All right. So, six one. This one's really, really, really important to me now. Okay. This is the sixth way to improve okay. the skimmer. So the bubble dra or bubble king skimmer I got in my basement works ungodly well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a major problem though. Oh, uh, like, you mean it, when it bubbles over and no. spills all over the place? Okay. So I knew this when I had the Delta hang on thing. Uh. This is when I went up through like four skimmers. And I finally knew I got the right one. Because the other ones kind of smelled green and they kind of whatever. When I took the like Dell Tech thing off and I took it to the sink, it smelled like somebody crapped in my house. Woo. It was terrible. <laughs> That's how I knew it removed poop from the tank. Yeah. Right? If it smells like poop, if it okay. looks like poop. So <laughs> account for the smell of the skimmer though, because now I got this uh, you know, bubble uh -huh. uh, a bubble king skimmer and it's doing the same thing. Smells like turds. Tell smells so terribly bad. So you're talking a chamber on top of the skimmer lid that has carbon or carbon something in it. Carbon in it, yeah. yeah. Because what's happening now is that it's sucking air from my room through the skimmer, then it flo air flows over all the turds in the neck, yep. then around the turds and foam in the water, <laughs> and then like essentially farts into the room. It did when I walked into your basement the other day. It's terrible. It was terrible. It is absolutely terrible how bad that smells. It's a sign that it works, but let's actually solve the, mm. the turd smell. So I'm sure like in some ways, some of these are solved on their own. Like I think I've, I've seen skimmers with a carbon on the top of them, but yep. you know, the million dollar idea or the multi-million dollar idea is that you put them all in one. Mm -hmm. Well, so like I want, I'm gonna go home now. I'm gonna take this, you know, two thousand dollar skimmer or whatever it is, and then get a big old bag of of carbon and lay, lay it on lay the top. Lay it on top. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. That wasn't my. That's not my ideal solution. What I prefer is that the lid mm. had a space for an inch worth of carbon, and yep. uh, the air could just pass through there. Yeah. Now I can get perfect turd removal. With none of the turd smell. <laughs> it's like poopery for your skimmer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for your all right, so, all right, if you produce that, you will never have to work a day again in your life. Uh, bravo. Yeah. Somebody produced a skimmer for me. I will be the first one to buy it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, that's awesome. All right, number two for you. Okay, <laughs> number two for me. Man, that's a good one. Uh, and I've got actually some of those parsed out on my own, too. Uh, oh, number two for me an LED panel the size of an eight bulb T5 fixture up mm. to six feet. Now I'm talking like, not your little, I mean, there's still LED panels, the Philips Coral Care and, and uh, ATI Stratton, probably some of those biggest ones that we've seen, like as far as a full panel. I'm talking like this whole six foot tank, one LED panel, long rectangular that fits over the top, just like T5 bulbs. For sure, million dollar oh, will, man. people will buy. I want that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people that are like, oh, I wonder if you could do this, you know, dome kind of diffuser thing underneath and it actually looks like the sun and it's just this big six foot panel and all this other stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's out there, but make us a big giant panel. All right. I'm clearly going to have to bounce around because I'm going to carry off of your idea here. Okay. All right. Number two for me, a light designed and marketed to the application. Uh. All right. Stop trying to be everything to everyone and own what your specific light does uniquely well. Yeah. Yeah, if I got a, if I got a small single source point of light that I know is not going to give me the shadow, the, you eliminate the shadows for SPS dominated tanks, then call it what it is. It's a mix, it's a LPS softy light 
or mm -hmm. maybe mixed tank. I got three types of tanks here. Okay. Well, and we've talked about this a lot. A lot. Okay. Number one, an encrusting. So I got three tanks. I'll tell you what they are, and then I'll tell you why they're different. The encrusting tank, so corals that uh, they encrust the rock. Number two, a mixed tank. Mm -hmm. and number three, wall-to-wall -wall SPS. Yes. Now, there are reasons why there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer to this thing. They, there's different requirements for the light. Yes. And actually, I talked to, uh, so remind me to tell you this little Terrence tip I, I, I picked up okay. the other day. Uh, <laughs> but the encrusting corals, so this is all about shadows and contrast. Yep. So these things are at like total odds with each other. So uh, shadows means that uh, if I block this thing, it's not going to see any light anymore. So the coral grows up, blocks the one next to it, bad news, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, shadows are also what makes every visual uh, like a piece of art or image interesting. Contrast. Contrast, yeah. sense of depth. Yep. You know, things yep. look different. Darks. They're all just like perfectly illuminated. Darks and lights. Yes. Yeah. So everything interesting about the tank will come from actually intentionally adding shadows, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll make a way better visually contrasting image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if I just have a bunch of encrusting corals, like uh, I got zoanthids, I've got... Yeah, I've got uh, Jedi mind tricks yep. and these monies and different things like this. Yeah, mushrooms, yeah. all kinds of just things that grow on the surface. They don't like they don't go shadow out. each other, mm -hmm. they don't branch yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Well now, man, a light like the Kessel is awesome. Nothing is going to be more high contrast in the tank, give like shadows and dark and light areas. Yeah. And it's going to look really good while providing, providing for the coral. for the coral, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wild, per yeah, that's the okay. best part. All right. Mixed, okay, I'm going to go actually all the way to the SPS tank. It'll come back to mixed tank. Okay. So SPS tank, problem now. We're talking dominated, like yeah. this one right here. And, and I'll actually say SPS and branching coral, not just SPS. Yeah, so that's true. If I filled with softies that eventually shadow everything. You have a mushroom in, uh, or a toadstool nope. inside of your softy tank that has got to be like a soccer, by, a soccer ball size diameter. And killed shadows every, everything killed, underneath. Killed everything underneath it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, in that spirit, anything branching that gets bigger and will shadow itself or something there near it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now it's what you just described. Yeah. The light needs to be larger than this, the object is trying to illuminate. Wrap it in light, right? Mm -hmm. And this is that piece that Terrence actually said the other day. It was pretty interesting. We always think about increasing PAR to get more light to the coral, mm. which actually is if you think about it, what if I covered up half of my hand and you couldn't see it? Well, the easiest way to get twice as much light is uncover it. Right. Right? right, And so when we allow the coral to grow to the point that it covers up half of its tissue or the thing next to it, it's getting half of the energy. Yeah. Right? And so now I'm going to have to crank up the light, but I could burn it then. You could burn the other top problems. one. Yeah. Yeah. So with an SPS coral uh, tank or branching, the best thing you can get is definitely wall-to-wall light, wall light, wraps it. Mm -hmm. You've seen it with T5s. You've seen it with uh, halides that have that giant reflector that encompasses uh, mm -hmm. the whole thing. There's no question. You also have seen it with multi-point lighting, where yeah. you know you take, you know, eight of uh, primes prime and put it together, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or you take a bunch of uh, XR30 uh, 30s and turn them sideways and put them 12 inches away from each other. So you can create it in a bunch of ways, but you know, market the light. Be brave enough to say this light is going to do this uniquely well, right? Yeah. All right now, hybrid. The problem with the SPS lighting solution like that is it actually looks really drab because everything is perfectly illuminated. The oh, shadows. You like the T5, are, just the flat. The T5 What's flat that analogy look. that you made you know, earlier when we were on, there was another episode we were talking about, the lighting episode, Buyer's Guide, where it's like, hey, it's the difference between you know, a painting on the wall or an actual moving piece of art. Mm -hmm. So then we have the mixed tank light, right? Mm -hmm. This is what a lot of people have, by the way. Oh, right? It's probably one of the more popular tanks. 80% has more than... Now, I don't need a perfect blanket of light. Mm -hmm. I don't need, it doesn't need to be end-to-end -end perfect. I want a little bit of contrast. I want a little bit of shadows. But I also want to provide enough energy to the corals. All right. Now you're looking at you know some of those LED panels like the Philips Coral Care or similar yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. They're a little bigger. Mm -hmm. You know you're thinking about your maybe your extra 30s a little bigger. Wish they were kind of a little overpowered for this application, right, right, so right. which could get a little lighter but still have that big that big area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now thinking about these things, and as well as using the grid of other lights together. All right. So here's why 
Mm. I would like to see this. And, and, and it's for you guys. Because I don't want to spend money on light. I don't need. The XR30 nope. is actually a good example of that. If I'm going to crank it down to 30% just to get a bigger light yeah, source. Why? Yeah, the, yeah, it's not really a great example of that. Mm -hmm. and that's why the XR15 is probably so popular. Uh, but stay on the box, man, what this what thing does. What it's for. Tiny little one, high contrast, great for your encrusting tanks. If you're trying to achieve a tank like this, this will actually be affordable and look awesome. Mm. Mix tank, light source. Not as big as the whole tank, but bigger. Yeah. Uh, wraps yeah, yeah, yeah. things in light, especially when you put them next to each other. It does a really good job of this thing. Now, you want SPS wall to wall. This is your dream. Every SPS nut will agree 100% in unison. The light should either be wall to wall, all the way from one side to the other, or you're going to use a whole bunch of little lights that are packed much closer than they're advertised for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's tell you how to do it. Let's say, okay. That feeds directly into my next one. Boom. Yeah. And so speaking of, let's tell you how to do it. How about, I wish somebody would make, or uh, even us too, and maybe this is challenging us, mm. a lighting calculator. A mm. calculator where I have how many I need, proper spacing, mounting height for what I'm trying to achieve. And I can actually like, use this as a comparison tool for all of the different lights out there and be like, all right, so here's are the XR15s. If I want to use them uh, for my mixed tank then, and it's a six foot tank by, you know, 24 front to back, this is how many you're going to need to achieve that. And all I can do, all I have to do then is just go, okay, I need four. Okay, bye. Okay, that is the same thing as I just said, actually, yeah. is stop trying to be everything to everyone. Be brave enough. They're like, the manufacturers out there are scared. Like, well, if I tell you one, well, you need one every 12 inches to achieve this, they're not going to buy the, them. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I will. I I'll buy the ones that, that do the job, man. Yep. And like, just tell me what I need. Yep. Worse yet is if you tricked me and told me I only need one every 24 inches and they killed stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, the stuff actually costs way, more than the light. Way worse. Yeah, way, way, yeah, way yeah. worse. So just tell me what I need to do. You know it. You made this thing for the application, mm -hmm. and then I'll do it. Yeah. Thank you. Make us a comparison calculator. There you go. I agree. Even us. All right. Like you can tell. Like, I get really frustrated because I want these things so bad. <laughs> uh, all right, so, all right, Barry, we're on a, we're on a path here, actually. Okay, tell. all right. All right, number three for me, uh. a frag kit, a frag dipping kit with, oh, le with legit today. instructions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, there's different uses. It's not, maybe not an all. I think Robert and, uh, Robert was telling me and talking to me about this because I asked uh, Robert and Adam, the social team, what, you know, this, I asked them this question, what they would use. Robert was like, how about a dip? that you know does maybe not a dip that does everything but at least very specific dip with dip instructions and what i can expect it to do mm -hmm. do i have this problem i use this dip mm -hmm. end of story i have this coral this dip yeah right this coral is safe with that dip not with this one right yeah you make it you should tell us right <laughs> uh, i mean like it's very vague great with all corals great yeah. with some corals yeah. whatever yeah. No, use for this purpose no man there's like there's purpose. some pretty specific buckets here we could get it into like yep. so iodine based dips yeah there's they, like the antibiotic dips mm -hmm. there's the iodine dips there's a like the uh, tea tree oil type yeah, dips. like pine sol type yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like uh the uh, uh hydrogen peroxide which works really really algae. good at getting algae and other stuff off of the frag plugs mm. But we don't really know, you know, exactly what corals it's safe with mm -hmm. and which ones it isn't, There's or you know, to what degree. Insecticide dips. Okay, so you want a million dollars? Go get those things. Get a, you know, get, a iodine or antiseptic one. Get yep. a, a tea tree one. Get uh, the, uh, the a peroxide, peroxide type one. thing. You know, get all these things, and then say on the damn bottle what they're good for, what you can expect mm -hmm. specifically from using it and what corals it's safe with using, and instantly it'll be the number one dip kit that everyone in the entire hobby buys. Yeah, because uh, there's no question. Uh, I'm not gonna go out and get some Lugals and then try to use it on like my SPS, hoping that it's going to kill red bugs. Like that just doesn't tie together very well. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> that was a really good one. It's super frustrating because even we don't know, man. Like so I don't know exactly which yeah. corals are going to respond bad to the hydrogen peroxide, but 
I wish I knew because I would use that on every frayed plug possible because it does such a good job of eliminating the introduction of algae to the tank. Yeah, and yes, we're telling you to bottle hydrogen peroxide and put it in this kit, but bottle hydrogen peroxide, you can use any hydrogen peroxide or whatever, you can probably find a lot of this stuff out elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But if you just make it so much easier for me to do and give me some dosing instructions, how much I need, uh, how long to dip it, you know, which, yeah, like you said, which corals work for it, uh, I'll buy hydrogen peroxide from your little kit instead of going to the store. Oh, so here's the deal. The DIY community is like, well, I never yeah, pay yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, man, is some of us will actually buy the hydrogen peroxide, even though it's the exact same thing as the stuff you bought from Walgreens. Yeah has a fish on it with clear instructions, and the fact that you took the time to figure out what coral that this is safe for, and you invested in the hobby and my success, means I will pay a couple dollars more to buy mm. and support your brand, yeah. because you did that effort for me in the way that the brown one from Walgreens did not. Yeah. I will give you the three bucks. Mm. You know, so uh, other people won't, so be it. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't matter. The information is what matters. Let's yeah. get it out there. Well, and even if you uh, find out, because I'm seeing some comments here, like, ah, don't use peroxide on any corals. It doesn't last well. And like, even mm -hmm. if you find that the, the, the peroxide only works on the algae, on the frag plugs, you're solving that issue for me before I put it in my tank. Maybe I, you, you, in the instructions, you say, hey, don't put this on coral. Don't let the tissue touch it, but sip, don't, uh, dip this in like for 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So the answer is which ones? Yeah. So there's like, you're gonna see a bunch of comments probably, yeah. I didn't work for me, work for me, like whatever. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Zoanthids for sure were tossed on. Mm. Right, so for whatever reason, zoanthids do not seem to uh, like have a, a yeah. negative reaction to it. And zoanthids happen to also be the thing that generally has the most like oddball species of algae oh, that grows Gets in between it. the polyps yep. and stuff. You just can't, you don't notice it. You can't scrub it off. So if the only thing that that thing said on it was like, hey, we identified this is a bad choice for everything else, but if you're going to add zoanthids to your tank, for God's sake, dip it in here. <laughs> I'll buy it. Uh, and I, I guarantee you, uh, a million other people will as well. Awesome. All right, next one. All right, for me, uh, so I'm gonna, I might jump around here too a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, I guess we were talking about lights. So um, how about an affordable PAR meter that works? Now, I know. we PAR meters at 500 bucks, nobody's going to buy this thing. We rent them out and saw like there was, this was an issue. Nobody's going to buy these things. It's just better to rent it out because you're only going to use it a few times. Uh, but what if we get a tool that is uh, just as accurate and maybe not, you know, my thousand dollar instrument uh, or leak or what have you, but you know, I buy this thing you know, for a hundred bucks, 150 bucks. All right, so if you could get one for like 150 bucks, you know, that was like in a meter and it wasn't like walking around trying to connect it to my computer yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. other stuff, uh, you know, or even better, like 99 bucks. I mean, this is not like super rocket science, especially if you could get it down to the point where like, I don't really care if it's up to 20% off. Yeah. Like, I don't care if I got 100 par or 120, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, all I want to do is make sure I don't have 250 or, uh, <laughs> or you know, 500 or, 500, yeah. or 10, yeah. you know, like, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, somehow we were able to survive in a world where we didn't have par meters before with all these T5s and LEDs and all that stuff. I, we're not looking to like an exact science, we're no. just trying to get into a ballpark. Like yeah. when we give you our ballparks, it's like 250 to 350. It's a hundred window. You yeah. know, uh, so let's just uh, yeah. get close in there. Yeah, somebody's saying that. Is the Sennai not good? I think the Sennai gets you in a decent ballpark mm -hmm. for what it is. But again, that goes back to the, you know, I have to put this thing into my computer to get the, uh, the readings and all this other stuff. You know, I'd, an analog one for a hundred bucks, perfect. Yeah, if I have to, so the Santa it does work. We did a, a video on, or a the different on meters. it. The different We tested them all against each other. Man, they're all so close. Yes. Uh, and so, and like, you can get really nerdy and say the one's a little bit better than the other one, but not in a way that ever will preside, pr produce a result in your tank. Yeah, yeah. All right, the center one is a little susceptible to the tilting the more than the other the one. Pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, the piece of it that matters really is the thing you just mentioned. I gotta go get a computer or laptop or whatever, like plug it in, run the software and put it in there. Uh, we had a old wholesale guy, he said it to me perfect here. Mm. He said, 
Some things are just better with a handheld meter and a par meter as well. Yeah. Yeah, just being able to walk up and hit it, mm -hmm. uh, it is better that way. Agreed. Uh, and this isn't rocket science technology, especially if we can scale back our expectations to the hobby level and the uh, like absolute science and maybe 20% off, who cares? Yep. I'd pay 99 for that, and I'd, I'd actually suggest it to most people. Easy. Good, good call. Uh, all right, this one. This one the, the local fish store should really listen to. Okay. But other people as well, because almost anybody could do this anywhere. Pest free cultured live rock <laughs> it is the holy grail <laughs> i have the same i mean thing. literally you could go to your garage yeah. right now dump a bunch of live rock and your rock in there that doesn't have any fish in it Seeds in it. your garage and start ebaying the stuff today yes uh, i mean well maybe in four months <laughs> uh, you know whatever yeah, like a source of live rock that didn't come out of the ocean doesn't have fish in it so i'm not getting like parasites and yeah, whatever fish yeah. you know all kinds of other crap in <laughs> uh you know i'm not getting all kinds of stuff in in my tank i'm not getting you know fish disease or funky algae yeah, or whatever mantises. but the tank is going to cycle immediately i'm not going to run into all the garbage everybody runs yeah. into this thing like the only reason that people don't like pay more for it is because they don't know. Because if I told you, hey, you know what, you're gonna buy you know, $300 worth of rock here for your tank, and it's gonna be a big pain in the butt, mm -hmm. or you could spend $600 and have such easy free sailing, man. All those problems you read about on the internet, not your problems. I'll pay, <laughs> I'll pay, man, for sure. Yeah. Uh, often, though, you'll have to experience them to understand the value of the 300 bucks. Mm. But out there, I guarantee, multi-million idea. It could be spidered web out of everybody's garage in the nation. It could be uh, some big guy out there, who knows? Yeah. Somebody, man, million well, dollar idea, pest-free, cultured live rock. It's the holy grail. It is the solution between sterile and then the stuff that comes out of the ocean, which is really isn't available. Could be pesty. And like, I'm getting all kinds of garbage. Yep. Right, right in, in the middle. middle is this perfect little thing that anybody could do. I have the exact same thing down here too. Live rock without pests. Boom. I had the exact same one. Million dollar Million idea. Million dollar idea. All right, next one for me. Um, I think I'll start with this one. This is something that I've been dreaming about since like 2014 or so. And it is cordless probes that talk to a head unit on your controller. Hmm. Meaning I've, I have, I've had you know four or five systems down in the basement. I've had another tank over here, another tank over here. What if I had a pH, temperature, salinity, or any of these probes, pH and temperature, that I just have to uh, mount a little uh, Wi-Fi signal unit around the side of the tank, drop my probe in, and now I can read it with all of my other tanks? I can't tell you who, but I've heard that's coming. I know. No, oh, you didn't know. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yes. We've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, it's been I talking about it for a long that. time. I mean, even Somebody out there probably knows who we're talking about, and they can say it for us. I mean, you could, it can apply to almost everything on a controller. Like, I have a, uh, you know, I have a power strip that is down in the basement, but rather than try to run a, a cable from my basement up to my head unit on my thing upstairs, uh, it just talks to the one upstairs, and now I've got it right mm -hmm. here on my phone. Agree. Mm -hmm. Agree. All right, next one for me. Okay, this one's very close to the, the live rock thing. Yep. But a dry rock cycle culture that works 99% of the time. Oh, okay. 95, okay. <laughs> the, uh, we're talking the, um, what's a, what's his name? Colby. Uh, Colby. Yeah, yeah, so he's making a culture. I don't, he doesn't really know whether or not it's gonna be rock or sand or rubble or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. but there's lots of people that could probably do this thing. It's make a culture that you can put in the tank that like, especially when it's like sterile day one. Yeah. If I put this stuff in there, it's highly likely it will spread faster than the things that don't exist at all yet. Well, that warfare really starts to become evident like after, you know, the first month or whatever, and you turn on your lights and mm -hmm. things just start battling it out and duking it out. Well, if I had you know, this culture bacteria starter, this starter culture thing in there that's already seeding the path, when I, kick on the lights, when everything starts going, I've already, the bit, the good stuff already has a leg up. Okay, anecdotally, yeah. that Ocean Direct stuff I added in my tank at home, yeah. changed the trajectory of the tank. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it would, normal sand would have done it or We're whatever, testing it. but almost overnight. Yep. Uh, like, boom, totally different trajectory for the tank. 
right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it'd be sweet if it was that. But one of the things that was kind of triggered for me is that first tank I had when I got from the TBA Aquatics, they sent me, you know, bags of sand from water right out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. They sent me uh, the rock that came out of the ocean. All right. So you know, can't really collect live rock out of the ocean anymore. Apparently you can collect sand though, because uh, we're getting lots of sand. Yeah. All right. So what if somebody sold live, legit, live sand out of the ocean to replace what we had live rock, and that was mm -hmm. what seeded uh, uh, all of the rock? Yeah, you don't necessarily need, I mean, this, the same bacteria that are gonna, that's gonna come on your live rock uh, is in the sand also, so why can't I just get scoops of uh, sand? Yeah, and like, I don't know exactly, you know, the mechanism of doing that because I don't think you'd probably store it forever. Probably, yeah, you know, yeah, it was shipped to me in an airport. You'll have to overnight you know? it or something, yeah. But like somebody that had the ability to, you know, go collect the sand, put it in a you know, safe area, and then overnight it to uh, reefers would probably make a fortune. And sand from pretty far off the coast, off the coastal waters, because oh, yeah. the pollution and everything like that, too. Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, that piece. Uh, yeah, don't get collected from your local suntan oil beach. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, next. Uh, next one for me is, um, uh, you already hit the protein skimmer design for CO2 media recirculation uh, with everything else. So I'm going to go to um, a universal or semi mostly universal battery backup solution mm. for most DC power heads. I think we're at a point where uh, some sort of battery solution or battery backup solution should be uh, included or an option for all of these pumps. A lot of uh, some of the, a lot of DC pumps don't have a battery backup option, but if you made one that uh, like tunes is, tunes is really close in that I can, you know, wire this thing into my tunes pumps uh, but each one of these different types of DC pumps have their, you know, uh, proprietary plugs and their proprietary this and that. But it'd be nice to have some kind of option that I can buy a battery backup and it will work for whatever pumps I have. At least the most popular. So the nature of this is most of the aquarium companies don't actually want to sell this thing because it, batteries are expensive. They're yeah. hard to ship. They're kind of dangerous. And they're a commodity item that don't really, doesn't really like flow through distribution very mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. You know, all these markups and yeah. stuff. So I really like Tune Solution, where you go buy your own damn battery from Batteries Plus or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, the problem is, is it like it isn't really safe, you know, per se. Like it doesn't like have a box yeah, that yeah, houses yeah. the whole thing, and like go get this size battery for it. Right, right. And one of the things actually I, I wish like for specifically from uh, Ecotech. Give me a lithium ion one, man. I'll pass. Ah, I was going to say yeah, the like, same Let's thing. take this thing down from here, down I mean, to here. Yes, you are <laughs> you, you are going to increase the price, but I, I don't have, it's not okay. this giant heavy thing that I got to mount somewhere. It's like Super this. Super duper heavy. Oh, man. Yeah. I'll take a lithium ion any day. Yeah, for sure. You pack it, put it down into like a wallet size, has the same output. I mean, 80, 80 man. hours, yeah. yeah. All right, but yeah, that would be cool if there was a universal one that everybody is like, okay, nobody wants to really make this thing. Somebody else will make it. And it's then got everybody ports plugs for into all it. your power for your most uh, popular ones. That yeah. would sell quite a bit. I do like that. I agree. Uh, all right. So for me, this is a. I, we talked about this once before, but my problem with the uh, algae scrubbers of the world is I actually have to scrub it. I don't want to. Mm. So I have to go up there and like clean it and scrub oh, all the we've crap said, Yeah, we've said this one before. Okay. This is great. And the thing that I love the most about the roller mat. Is it just rolls the turds right out, right? <laughs> you know, the turds grow in there. Real time. Okay, like I saw this once at a trade show, but nobody's ever materialized this thing. Who knows what they're ever gonna do with it. Somebody needs to do something with this thing. <laughs> it's an algae reactor that works like a roller mat, grows the algae on that felt pad, and it rolls it right out of the tank. Mm. Okay, you build a sump, that has the LG reactor right in it. I'm not maintaining Ketomorpha and that giant mess and all of the detritus that builds up in the bottom Radio and all that stuff. Just grow. Yeah, man. I don't have any of that nonsense. Oh. I have an LG scrubber that automatically removes the LG out of my tank, you know, mm. an inch a day or whatever it does. It's a perfect medium for growing this stuff on. This is such an epic winner. It will become the default solution for nutrient control 10 years mm. from now. You will be the king 
just come along for the ride, man. Do it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I couldn't believe anything more than that. Uh, no, and actually, I like that idea better. That So this kind of leads into my next one also, is uh, a, a reliable source of clean Kato. Like, clean Kato. But... Now that you've said this idea of the roller, the roller algae scrubber, clean Kato or sourcing clean algae is not my problem because mm. it grows itself. It came from my own tank. I didn't have to introduce any type of algae to get it going. Like I've started my algae scrubber and you know, people say it probably works best when you seed it with other one. You don't have to, like mm. it will grow out of thin air on its own. And that's what my algae scrubber does. So, you know, uh, I like that idea. If that idea doesn't come to fruition, then please go like make us some clean Kato that's readily available all the time, not out of stock all the time. I want to go convert my sump over to this idea right now as we speak. This uh, scrubber I one? I feel like I could do it. <laughs> uh, all right, so I had the same thing actually. I'm so sorry, LG Barn, but clean bulk Kato Morpha. Yes. Uh, there, I mean, LG Barnes always out of LG. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I feel for a little compassion because it's actually harder to grow this stuff than you think. Yeah. But man, like, there's so much demand for the Cato Morpha. In, in bulk sizes, too. Yeah, I'm not in golf ball. Not my, I can't start anything with a golf ball. Okay, so this is uh, one of my problems uh, with the LG reactor. If you've been wall, uh, following along oh, with Oh, your us. Pax Bellum? Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I throw a little bit of, of algae inside of the Pax Bellum and it grew the algae. But everywhere that LG wasn't grew slime and gook and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So it's not the Pax Melon didn't work, man. It's the fact that I didn't have enough algae for it. And so this is the solution that I came up with. I'm going to have to test. Mm. Is I'm going to have to build some like, you know, DIY refugium in the sump, quarantine. and then like quarantine out the yeah. like catomorpha, then grow it and grow it until it fills up some big giant basket. And then when it's finally filled up the basket. Now I can start my Pax Bellum. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish you'd just sell work. me a gallon just of this send, stuff. It's just seaweed, just man. Just send me. Yeah, uh, no, two gallon bag full of Kato, good to go. So if anybody figures out how to sell a gallon worth of Kato in bulk if for a reasonable price, you will be a millionaire. Apparently it's All being right. worked on. All right, so uh, a, oh, ne next one. Um, uh, here, here's a good one too. Um, We've already seen this on the market for a very short time, but I th it needs a permanent spot in the market now, and that is a cheap reef monitor. Damn it, you stole my thunder. <laughs> All right, yep. Cheap reef monitor. All I need to know is that temperature is straight, that pH is good, that you know power is and, and connectivity is working, and I, like, if I have a power outage, I can get a notification. You know, three or four of the biggest things that can crash my reef tank all I need to know is that uh, they exist, they're working fine, or they're totally screwed, and I can you know, do the rest from there. I don't need to control a whole bunch of stuff. I just need to reef monitor. Cheap. All right. So there's like this big dumb debate. Do you need a controller or not need a controller? Mm. You can decide for yourself. Yeah. Let's skip that yeah, question, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, like I need, to, I need to automate every last thing, and you know, if something's wrong, you need to solve it in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're either that person or you're not. And the reason most people are not that person is because I don't want to read the manual. Yeah. I don't want to learn how to do it. It just seems kind of too much for me yep. or whatever. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of the mentality of a lot of people from the controller aspect, right? Or maybe they just don't even trust it. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. But here's the thing, man. I know this for sure. It is 100% true that the monitor component of it, plug it in. Yes. If the install is this, plug it in, enter my phone number and my email and I'm done. <laughs> Everyone can do that. It's if you can't, you don't. You shouldn't have a reef tank. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone can do that. Enter my phone number, email. Uh, the thing is now the set thing up. Thing is set up. Right. Yeah. And now it will tell me if the thing is leaking. It will tell me if there's a chemistry issue via pH. You know, all the dosing stuff is, is wrong. Temperature, not just my heater or my chiller, yeah, or my yeah, fans, yeah, yeah. but even if somebody left my windows open or the furnace or the AC broke, all those kinds of things. Mm. It will tell me almost anything uh, about my tank. And the focus here isn't automation and complexity. No, no, no. It's Instant. The way I wrote it is this. It's just an easy way to say shit is going south, solve it or else. Yeah, exactly. Right? And yes. it will happen to you, man. It mm. will on a long enough timeline. If you want to have a 10-year tank or even five-year tank, something is going to break, 
And the only reason why your tank isn't going to die is because something told you about yep. it and you went and did it. Yeah. And you can, and the option to add on like a loud audible or, or visual alarm while you're there in the house if you don't have your phone or something near you. I mean, these, it doesn't have to get into powering, turning things off and on automatically. Mm -hmm. I just need to know that crap's wrong. So, right now, my tank's heater, my kid could have uh, pulled something, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I would know right now, my phone would like blow up on me right here, right? Yeah. And then I'd say, see ya, I got stuff I gotta go do. Right in the middle of this live, <laughs> I would go do that. So here's the thing, man, mm -hmm. is it is so important. Somebody should create a monitor that does this thing. We saw it in the OMO. Yeah, yeah. I'm still hopeful uh, yeah, that uh, Neptune does it in the future. Like somebody Which, create this thing, because I know I'm not the only one that would like this thing. You will, I mean, we sold hundreds of them in a day. Yeah. Uh, and it, all it does is monitor your tank. It's just like, it tells you, man, hey, something's bad, go do. All right, go uh, ahead, next. Well, well, price point on that. I'd pay up to 150 bucks on that. Would you pay I up to 200? I, I don't know, man. By the time you bought this thing, you got a you got $150 fish in there. Oh, yeah. So I don't know, you can debate for yourself how much you pay, I, I, I don't know. I know I, I spent a thousand bucks on a, on a SPX, uh, SPS frag pack and automatically like the value of a monitor to not kill a thousand dollars worth of things is worth the price. So here, here's the piece of it that yeah. like, it's, you won't get until you get it. Everything in a saltwater aquarium will break. For sure. Always. 100%. Yes. Many of these things many times, right? Once you can get to the place that you accept that, you can do an elaborate array of stuff to try to catch it and solve it in real time. Mm -hmm. Or you can just say, you know what? 99% of the time, I'm within a half hour of my tank, and if you just told me, I'd go just do something. Just tell me, it. yeah. Uh, well, but and then, if I didn't know, I wouldn't be able to. And didn't know includes when you're at home. Yes. I'm barbecuing out back, you know. So many. You know, things, yeah. Randy's teaching me how to smoke something, whatever. Like we're messing around, doing whatever it is, you know. And. and uh, <laughs> Yeah, Dave over there. Barbe like, <laughs> barbecue smoking. <laughs> no, it's barbecue Pork smoking. shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're having a good time, man, doing whatever. Yeah. I'm sleeping, man. Sleeping. When, whatever it one. is, big you know, one. like I'm not actually standing there staring at the aquarium 24 hours a day. Yeah. So, you know, like. Just, just siren. Know woo, woo, yeah, woo. The, the heater broke, dude. Go do some. Okay, sweet. I'll do it. <laughs> all right. All right. All next. right. Uh, let's see. Next one for me is. Um, Ah, this is I'm I'm point, poking my finger at our, at us again here on this one. Nah, BRS calculator app with everything. Mm. I want a sand bed. I want Kalkwasser. I want uh, two part. I want all this stuff. I just want and then monitor. You know, I I want an app. I want a calculator. We've been talking about building out our calculator for years uh, okay. with all of the stuff that we want. I want it. I agree. So. Somebody in marketing has got to be watching right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. So all of you out there right now, tell us the calculator that you would like to see. Yes. And then I will tell them, if you only did this for these people, mm. it will make you a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, to me, it's like, man, there should be a calculator, not only for your like, calcium and alkalinity and your like, yeah. sand bed stuff, but like, if you go look at Hamza's Reefs calculators, like eight million things, Tons every configuration, right? Yes. I mean, I can, I have a calculator, there's a calculator like JD has a calculator for, hey, you're switching from two part over to calcium reactor, here's your calculator. You're switching from, calc uh, you're doing something with your calcium reactor, here's your calculator. Mm. Stand bed depth and what you want based on your dimensions, here's your calculator. I mean, that's great, dude. Like, what if I was using C-Chem and I wanted to switch to Red Sea? How do I switch yeah. the dose? I want to switch to Triton now. I want to switch that mm -hmm. to BRS, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, what should my dose be? Damn it if I don't want to know. Because I don't really want to just guess. No. Right? All right, so Calculate. tell the calculators, they like, I dream it up anything, man. I don't care what it is. Tell us what you'd like to see, and I will go strong arm the marketing. I like Harkin's aquatics uh, uh, idea here, too. Even a salt calculator, like mm. this, this much weight in salt will yield yeah. very, very close to like 30. It can't, obviously can't be accurate. Who knows like, if it, how accurate it can be probably with every single close. batch. Prob probably really dang close. Okay, I would totally do that. I like that. I, I would, I, I, scooping out 8 million scoops, nope. or I could just measure 4,600 grams. Yes. Uh, like a little just scale. You know, the scale doesn't cost that much. You know, probably 40 bucks, and now I'm no more. No yeah. more. Are you using Red Sea Coral Pro? It's this many grams. Are you using Tropic Marin Pro? It's this many. 
Agreed. They're not equal, but the, the cups, dude. It, like it, it's just like cups test dissolve. Cups test dissolve. Cups. Oh, damn, uh, I went too yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Such there's your time suck. So. Okay, all right, solid. All right, this one. I'm pretty certain millions. Ooh. I'm pretty certain. <laughs> okay, a one button calcium reactor. Right. Oh yeah. All right. So the reason nobody, like most reason, most people don't have calcium reactor is like ah oh, pH, uh, Regulator. Like bubble rate, uh, flow rate, blah, blah blah blah. Right? Yeah, yeah yeah. All right. So now that we know what we know about these calcium reactors, if somebody would just make the thing already set up, meaning like I don't don't go guessing what pH you need to set mm -hmm. up, man. Just set the damn thing to six, seven point six, you know, uh, 6 or six six point five. Set it up to six point five. Just put it on there. Uh, or like, you know, ask what media you are using, it'll just Yeah, because I'm testing right. right now and there's different, definitely different pH points for different media. There's common ones for calcite or the more calcium yeah. carbonate type yep, stuff. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Just, it just has that pH set for that thing. It like doesn't ask you really anything, it's just there. The only thing on the whole thing is how much you want to dose a day. Is that control mm -hmm. that, that, Good. uh, Continuous uh, duty dosing pump. Continuous yeah. duty dosing pump. How much you want to dose a day? Like 50 uh, mils. 50 milliliters a minute or 100 or whatever it is. And then if the levels are dropping, oh, 110 instead. Done. And the whole thing is all set up and already done, and it can absolutely be done. It isn't even rocket science. It's just a couple of known concepts that are already there, just preset. And the only thing the user or reefer has to do is decide, want more calcium? 110? Oh, I'll go to 120. Done. Yeah, and even when it gets close to its max f uh, flow rate, may, and then it says, uh, "You sure you want to try like maybe 6.4?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. 6.4. Turn it back down. Start over again. Okay. So I know some of the people involved in this stuff. Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> and one of the reasons that this thing doesn't exist on the planet is because everybody's afraid of a sticker shock. Mm. You know, like. Well, if we built it that way, then you know it's going to cost a thousand bucks, or it's going to cost eight hundred bucks, or whatever it's going to cost. Yeah. And then nobody will buy it. Like, do you? They're spending that much anyway, right? And then you're just making them like you're selling them this plastic tube, and then you're telling them not what media to use. You're telling them like you know go research this thing on yeah, your own. Yeah, you're not telling them anything. You, know, you don't direction. tell them anything. Like here's a plastic tube. Good luck. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. no, 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 no. No recommendations. Man, just own. Own who you are and what it is you're trying to sell, what the solution this thing is supposed to do, set it up so that it works and a normal human being could use it. <laughs> it is really and easy. And then people will use it. It's very easy. Okay, I still I feel the same way about the Kelk reactor as well. Yeah, I do too. So I'm gonna set one of these up at home. I haven't especially, shared this with you yet. I mean, especially if we can uh, find a, an accurate way to monitor the uh, electrical conductivity inside and when it's oh, time neat. to change it. Nope, yep, that'd be neat too. Yeah. Uh, but for me, the Kelk reactor, this one's actually much simpler. But like, I used to use Kelk while I an auto top off and then they would just replace it. And the problem is, is that it doesn't really match consumption very well. Mm -hmm. And you know, like it, it's just, it's a makeshift solution that kind of works. Kind of tops off your tank, kind of manages calcium milk link. Yeah. All right, so I have accepted now that pH is probably one of the biggest barriers to, you know, it's the next like evolution. rapid success, yeah. right? And yeah, you'll yeah. have way, way better success with almost everything in your tank if you manage the pH. So in my tank at home, I'm absolutely gonna put a calc reactor in. I'm gonna, I haven't decided if it's gonna be a big calc drum or a reactor, but I think right, it'll be right, a right. reactor. Yep. Okay, and just put a dosing pump on it. So mount the dosing pump on it, and I can just tell it to dose you know, a uh, half a gallon of this a day. And I can, now instead of like being tied to evaporation, I can just crank it up and say, yep, do 2,000 milliliters a day. And if calcium levels start to drop, uh, you know what, 2,200 instead. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And done. And it will just pump that water from my little auto top off box, you know, the, the auto fills yep. through the reactor into the tank in a precise amount every day, regulated the way I wanted to do it. Take you a long way. Yeah. It'll solve a huge portion of my pH issue in my tank. Really, really simple. But I'm not making you shop for pumps. I'm not telling you, like, making you figure it all out. Like, you know, here it is. It's all in one tight little solution. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Next. OK. Uh, another one to point the finger at us. Uh, packaged DIY Reef Chili Frozen. Hmm. This that is something that we've sure. talked about for a long time, oh. because we were, we came up with the recipes, and there was you know this this type of recipe or with coral or fish only corals and fish corals all this other stuff, 
Yeah, how about just DIY? You tell me how to build it. Okay, so make it. For those of you that don't know. Yeah. Okay, so you don't need to tell you, we don't need to make millions on this one because it's, you know, we call the DIY reef chili frozen. Somebody oh. can ma follow the recipe. I don't care who makes it. Uh, it could be us, it could be you guys. Uh, we'll make a million dollars for somebody. But for those of you who don't know, Reef chili. The yeah. foundation of reef chili was actually kind of this thing. From that frozen food? It was, I wanted to feed all these foods. I had listened to all the literature on it and like different corals feed different microns. They eat different types of foods. So I went out and bought all of them. And then I realized I got like 8 million years of this stuff <laughs> because I didn't need this much. There's tons, you made me yeah. buy 50 bucks worth of it and I only really needed this little bit of it. And when you combine it all together, man, this is decades worth, yeah. you know? Okay. So the same thing, if you build this kit, like some of the cost of building that DIY frozen food mm -hmm. is the same thing. I had to go buy a bottle of amino acids. It's three times bigger than I would actually use for this amongst a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. What if we shrunk it down into little sizes yes. and like use all of this and this much fish food yeah. with these fish, yeah, yeah, yeah. boom, done. You still can make it, you make it at home yourself, use the ingredients that you want, but we'd give them the ingredients Mm. Or, we'd make, or it'd be pre-made. Somebody over in marketing right now is like, oh, thank God. You, you screwed us like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, things you never <laughs> use again. Finally, you came up with one. <laughs> Bravo, man. Somebody's going to buy your beer today. Uh, all right. For me, this one, like, I think would be really cool, too. This is, again, there's so many things in our hobby that have been half-assed. Mm. Like, they, like, just kind of, like, here's the tools. Go figure it out on your own. Yeah. I'm not going to be brave enough They're to gonna tell you They're not going to tell you, how to, tell you how, to how to use it. Yeah. yeah. Yep, uh, yep. All right. A safe, easy way to use ozone. Oh yeah, so I was I was looking at the exact same thing because I was going to say uh, an ozone reactor. Uh, a vast marine has an ozone reactor that you actually. Um, so I was talking with Brent about this back in the lab the other day, where he's taken um, a calcium reactor with dual chambers, an old one, and he's put filled you know the main chamber with uh, like some bio balls, uh, and then the secondary chamber with carbon and he runs his ozone water through that thing as a reactor and then back into the tank. So it you know, clears off the excess uh, ozone and it you know, distributes that in all of those spaces with the bio balls and stuff. So he said, yeah, Vast Marine already makes one of these things too. All right, so I got a few problems. This is, I wanna tell you why ozone's great and then I'm gonna tell you a few problems that somebody needs to solve. Yeah. Okay. So ozone is great because carbon, A, like, you know, goes up and down, you know, like it gets really dirty, starts working, then it strips all of it out, and then it adds it back in, it strips it back all out. Yeah. It's very unstable, yeah. right? Uh, and it depends on when you change it out. It, it grows bacteria on it if you leave it in too long, especially if it's in a high flow, well oxygenated thing like a reactor, so you're like removing some of your filtration with yeah. it, yeah. all kinds of things. And, and anything you use to get to, to, like, anything you put in the water will add something to the water right. as well, you know? And so, and uh, like, I, I don't know, it's just, it works. It's a good option, it's inexpensive. Ozone, however, will just keep the water crystal clear 100% of the time. Yeah. Has almost all of the same benefits of carbon. Uh, carbon. Not all, but most, yeah. especially the ones that are valuable. But it's the light penetration too. will be stable and stable. perfect. We've seen like the difference between before and after carbon, like the light or the par going down 30%. I bet you many tanks are actually worse than that. Mm -hmm. You know, as it's yellow, if you look through the side of your tank and it looks yellow, you probably lost 30% of your par. And then you're gonna, when you do the carbon, you're gonna raise it back right back up. Yeah. Okay, so ozone will also get rid of the smell uh, out, of the, out of the tank. So if you have like a refugium that stinks, it probably won't stink anymore. <laughs> All kinds of things that ozone will do. And it's just like extra oxygen essentially, yeah. right? Okay. So, in that spirit, there are some problems. Uh, and mm. one of which is, like, we're trying to remove it from the water after it goes through the reactor or skimmer or whatever. Right, so right. You gotta get a, a good solution that actually sends the water through the carbon to, like, and in this case, you're not actually using carbon to mm -hmm. actually remove anything. It's, it's a catalyst. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So, like, the carbon you can leave in there almost perpetually. Yeah. The problem is, is there's multiple types of carbon. And this is, uh, one of them is uh, like a pelletized, you know, mm -hmm. pelletized carbon has been powdered and then re-combined. Uh, Bonded together, yeah. yeah. Some so kind of bonder. Ozone can actually, in some cases, break, break that. that bond and uh. then re-powderize the carbon. But you don't want to go and into no. your tank. 
Yeah. Okay, so pelletized carbon, a bad choice for trying to pull mm. out ozone in the water because you might break it all up. So we need a harder, ozone. denser carbon? So then there's those little granule pieces that look yep. like broken up little pieces. Yeah. Some of those are actually just a bituminous coal that's been broken up. Yeah. Some of them are actually bituminous coal that's been powdered, glued back together, and then broken back up. <sighs> Right. So it's a mix. It's yeah. a hit or miss. Again, glued. Yeah. You know, and the glue oh, okay. uh, is going to fall yeah, apart yeah, again. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And in fact, there were some amino acids on the market for a while that would actually eat the carbon uh, bond and glue apart as well. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. I don't, I don't ah, remember who made it. There was a specific brand that had that problem. Uh, it was a long time ago. But <laughs> uh, so, in that spirit, like, I don't know the answer to what's the perfect carbon for this mm -hmm. personally because we don't, I don't really run ozone, right? right? I haven't hunted all these things down, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But we need to find out the right carbon for this so we can remove it from there. We also need to find the air that leaves the skimmer or reactor or whatever so we remove the ozone from the air so we don't harm the people that live in the house. Right. right? And the, like, I don't know, this one's kind of funny for me because you know, it's called ozone like bad for, you know, uh, breathing it. But at the same time, like, the if you ever went to Sharper Image and you saw those like, you know, air yeah, filters. It's, it's, it's all ozone. it was is ozone generator. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. And like lots and lots of air filters have like an ion button, which is ozone generator. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's I don't know. Of, there's got to be a safe use for it for the hobby. There's actually like in, there's little kits and stuff you can like put in a little alarm if there's a o excess mm -hmm. ozone building up in mm -hmm. the room or whatever. I don't, I don't know. So then within it is the contraption itself, right? The generator, yeah. the dryer, the. Uh, so you, yeah, you get, you get drier, makes it last longer, produces more ozone, the mm -hmm. whole thing. You know, and then get ones that like automatically dry, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But like, I've seen these. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but I've seen the the reactor one. And so mm -hmm. the ozone reactor, what it does is usually it trickles over the little bio balls. Yep. 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 Creates a thin film of water, and then you use an air pump to create like two or three psi of air which like essentially pushes the ozone into this thin layer of water trickling over mm. the bio balls, yeah. right? Okay, so that works really well. Uh, it helps getting more ozone and it reacts the, better, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It's a giant pain in the butt to run. There's only like one company that makes this thing and they don't make them fast. Mm. Uh, my experience is plug it into your skimmer, works just as good. <laughs> Whisking the ozone together yeah. inside yeah, of yeah, a yeah, skimmer yeah. works almost as good. My other experience is, is in most cases when they do that, the production of skimmate in that skimmer goes to crap, stops working. So I, I would buy the cheapest skimmer. Yeah, yeah, the cheapest skimmer that's not going to skim and put it over there as a purpose. But now here again, we're in this like DIY, you know, thing. You, know, like you go buy this yeah. thing and that thing and just build it all together. together. Go find no. out what carbon somebody works for can, you. Somebody can make a kit. Somebody can make a, a unit. So if somebody made a unit out mm -hmm. there, this is a ozone reactor. It doesn't matter if it does that pressurized thing or it's just kind of like a fake skimmer. This is the carbon you should use. Here's the solution to make sure it doesn't come out into the air. Here's mm -hmm. the solution that doesn't get in the water. This thing is safe and easy to use. So many people would buy this to keep the water crystal clear all Switch of the time. Carbon. Yeah, I'll keep stable parameters and the tank just looks pristine all the time. If it was safe and easy, tons and tons mm. of people would buy this. Multi-million dollar deal. Uh, this is one of those uh, BRCV investigates the ideas that we have to test with the carbon too is you, know, you uh, have a par meter in the tank while you know while it's dirty and you're taking measurements then you run put fresh carbon in and you see you know the changes in par but like you said like that actual carbon that we put in reactors or whatnot gets clogged and then it starts to wear you when if you're late on changing it it's all of these fluctuating parameters i th uh, i'm going to start using ozone i think here sometime or explore ozone it's it's a very a vast marine's little uh, thing intrigues me and i would love to do it I'm just not going to put it in my house until somebody has done the work for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I, I just isn't. I don't need it bad enough to try to figure out the health to the fish coral in my house. Yeah, I don't need it bad enough. I'll just use the carbon. But if somebody man did this it. Uh, and pioneered it, BRS would test it for sure. Yes, uh, the community tested the trailblazers, and the rest of us would all benefit. Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> all right. This one. <laughs> If somebody produced this, 
Not only will you be rich, but you will have solved a major, major problem within our hobby. This would have solved, I know what you're gonna say, this would have solved my mom's problem that she recently had too. A quarantine kit with legit instructions. Yes! Hey, go buy, all you have to do is provide, all you have to do is go get the, uh, get the tank, get you know, the kind of the filter type process stuff in there, the, the PVC pipes or whatever, and then here's the kit that you're going to need for. Here, here's the things you need to do it. Prophylactic here's all of it. or, yeah. Yeah, or Here, you're actually solving something. Here's, here's all the stuff you need to quarantine a fish. Here's a little box. Here is uh, uh, the medications that you need to use, and not for every last like thing under the sun. The most the eighty popular. twenty of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twenty percent of things you need to solve eighty percent of the problems, right? Here are the steps that you should do it, and clear undefined or definable things that you know aren't trying to like cover your butt on every last thing, mm -hmm. man. It's just like, man, if I was your best friend, I would just do these things. Here's the things <laughs> you should do, and you'll probably be successful. Uh, do that thing and give them those things and you know what man you will save an enormous amount of fish yep you'll make it way easier and you'll give a baseline of QT to the entire hobby and industry you'll be my hero I mean it goes beyond just uh, yes there's you know there's forums out there there's how to's out there there's you know what medications to buy it's it's just like the you know it's just like the water, the auto water change conversation or the filter sock conversation. The more, the easier it is for me to actually do this, the more likely I'm going to do it. So uh, changing filter socks, the more easier it is. So we got a roller mat. Water changes, we got an auto water changer. Quarantine, instead of going and reading through posts and blogs and uh, forums and all this other stuff, I have a kit, I bought, I bought it as a kit and now I, all it tells me is hey, get a tank, get a pump, get this filter, here's the kit, here's how to use it. I'm more likely to do that for every fish I try to bring into my tank. Do you know why this doesn't exist? No. People are mean. They don't want, they want to see fish die? No, man. <laughs> it's because you bicker all the time, you oh, know, the about proper, like the proper way to do yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And somebody needs to be brave enough and just willing to be, like take the lashing you know, that yeah. everybody's going to say that this is the wrong way to do it, there's a better yeah, way to do it, ahead. all this other garbage. No. And, you know, 80% of instances, this 20% of effort will solve 80% of the problem. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I stop worrying about what, you know, a handful of people say and start worrying about the 80%, man, that you helped so, so much. Oh, man. Be brave. Mm. Be brave. Be vulnerable. Go out there, take the risks, man. You're gonna get the lashings. Yeah. You're gonna get the, the 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 pushback. It's not about the people that hate you. It's about the people that love you, man. Mm. Go for those people. Gosh, all that's right. Strong. All right. all right. So, all right. This actually hits one you just said earlier. Okay. I got a couple more here. So, right. I got to 14. I'm telling you, I could get to 45. There'll be an episode <laughs> two of this someday. Uh, all right. So, uh, food that matches the investment in our tanks and today's approach to pet nutrition. Mm. Again, stop trying to be everything to everyone and own what you're good at, mm. right? So like in this case, like the brine shrimp to me is the meow mix of cat food. It's like, uh, right? Uh, right? Like this is the least possible source of energy it's like your and diet protein. Of, it's like bread and water diet. Yeah, if I'm looking for the cheapest possible way to keep this thing alive, <laughs> prison man, diet. definitely you've got that covered, right? <laughs> all right, but so like in the world now, you like go to all these boutique foods for our pets. And I will tell you for sure, many of those approaches for me have changed the quality or the health of my pet, mm -hmm. or actually even some ways just like my quality of my own life. And some of you already heard this before, but like with my cat, I ended up feeding him uh, the like just ground up chicken, you know, I throw the chicken in yeah, and yeah. spit it out, now it's food. Yeah. Uh, two things happened. One, man, he stopped having so many turds, which to me meant, and he was eating, gobbling all up, which me meant he was actually utilizing this stuff instead of having an enormous amount Waste. of filler, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Turds stopped stinking. Hmm. I gotta tell you that, I, I see that with human beings too. People have terrible diets, they stink that bathroom up terrible. <laughs> uh, people that have really good diets tend to not. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't know, man. You put a quality into uh, an organism's food, man, comes out the other side. So like, let's start thinking about it. Instead of like, stop thinking about like, you know, herbivore blend yep. and this is a blend. Like, 
Now, you know what? This food is specifically good for these types of fish. Let me tell you why, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We've done the research and we put the effort into it and we're brave enough, man, to assume that somebody will actually buy this if we did it right, and they will. Proteins, Guaranteed. fats, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like, so, uh, it kind of hits your DIY thing a, a little bit as well, uh, but like, like, let's stop thinking or, or start, you know, matching the amount of food we put in there to the investment. The fish cost 150 bucks. Yeah, place. my food you know, should like fish be are super cents on the dollar, yeah. Uh, and now they're gonna be with me for 20 years. And in fact, if you're just thinking about it from a cheap perspective, like, they'll be with me for 20 years if I feed them right. They'll be with me for five if I don't. Yeah. You know, they will survive the same way the Meow Mix thing did, but I don't know. <laughs> hopefully Pierre doesn't sue me. Uh, all right, so the next one here is, uh, okay, I like, I like, I'm really getting at these things of like, let's get the solution, build it out, and be brave enough to just sell it for whatever it costs because the people are paying it anyway. People are afraid of uh, sticker shocks. Yeah. Uh, well, and then people are afraid of that, that feedback, that negative feedback, and oh man. Uh, well, because you know, like a lot of people come, it's not worth it. Blah blah blah. Well, I don't know. For somebody, it is. Yeah. You know, like just worry about that person. You know, like other person wasn't going to buy it anyway. Who cares? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, a legit standalone auto water change system. Mm. Right. So right now I got the dose. You know, I got to buy an Apex. Yeah, I yeah, look yeah. it all up and whatever. There used to be the uh, Auto Aqua uh, Auto Water the Changer. Tiny little pumps. We don't have that yeah. anyway. And there were tiny little yeah. micro pumps. Yeah. No, like something like I mean, Apex. Hear this one. It uh, could just be a, a smart head type unit boom. in a dose. Yeah, and it says a little digital readout on the thing says 100 milliliters a day for both pumps. Done. Oh, yeah. yeah, plug it in the wall, button, turn it to 100. Button for you know, calibrate to make sure everything's yeah. good. Do it. Do a gallon a day. Done. Done. Boom. Auto water change solved. <laughs> standalone. How, would you buy this thing? Wait, if I, you could do an auto water change thing and it was just a standalone, just a two standalone. heads, and you just walked up and you touched the screw to the thing to to three percent a day or one percent of your tank, mm. and you were done. Would you buy this thing? It's that same conversation. Water change of, is done. Yeah. Call them buckets the, to run water around, done. The easier it is, the more likely you're going to do it. And if I make it so easy that you don't have to lift a finger other than mixing your salt a once a month, I, my water changes are just happening. Cool. Better tanks, better success, better reefers. All right. All right, this is uh, another one here. If you make this, this is another one you can do at your own house. Oh, I like this right? one. <clears throat> you can do this at your house. You can quit your job today, I bet you could do this, if you have just, just a little bit of artistic uh, flavor. Just do it full time. Aquascapes. Yeah, 120, mm -hmm. 40s. Yeah, so it's not the kind of cubes. thing, again, everybody will pay for, you know, a lot of people like to build their own aquascapes yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But some people, if, like, let's just say it, some people have not an artistic bone in their entire body, yeah, and they still want their tank to look nice in their house. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of rock, 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 yeah, uh, build like, me something like the NSA, really awesome aquascape. Okay, I will tell you this: the amount of requests that I got to build aquascapes, yeah, I could quit my job here and go do that <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, it. Just do the NSA thing, because yeah, that that allows you to, or I mean, there's other options out there. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. You can like, explore it. You could go out there and create an artistic, uh, you know, look. You can crate it, you know, spray mm. foam it into a big crate and ship to somebody. Well, somebody will buy it. And it doesn't have to be, um, uh, it doesn't have to be customized. So it's not like a, a made-to-order one. There are plenty of the popular dimension tanks, the 120s, the 40s, the 60-gallon cubes, the 90 cubes, you know, all of these. 220s, very popular sized tanks that you could just build a whole bunch for and sell okay. them as a set. The thing I like or, or Hardy on Instagram more than probably anything else yeah. is I think it's WL Marine. Okay. He makes little aquascapes for small tanks. Yeah. And uh, maybe he's making for big too, but I always see him on Instagram. And um, this guy's no sh no question making a living out of yeah. it. Yeah. And they're yeah. really sharp, man. They look like you're going to set up a little office tank and like, yeah, man, you want it to look perfect. And yep. this is one of those things. And yes, Building the aquascape yourself is part of the DNA. It's rewarding. Of the tank. Yeah. But I don't have the patience to do your two week one. It took me a week, man, with two people. <laughs> so 
no. And, and, it, and if you just owned it, like I've tried it, man, it didn't work out and I suck at this, mm. maybe I still want a nice looking tank. <laughs> I don't know. So there's enough people out there for sure that like, I mean, it's as simple as building these things and yeah. making a name for yourself on Reef to Reef or mm -hmm. like a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like eBay even, yeah, Facebook you know, wherever, groups. like your local forum, whatever yep, it yep, might be, yep, yep. you know, just find a community and uh, like, uh, you know, like, hey, you get known yeah. for making these things uh, for your fish store. Fish yeah, store probably yeah. go make one, bring it to the fish store and say, put this on display. Uh, and if anybody buys it, I'll make you another one. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, it will sell. Absolutely. Yeah, guaranteed. Oh, especially, yeah, I mean, if I'm walking through a fish store and I say, oh, I really like that tank, and they're like, yeah, well, the, the Aquascape comes with it, too. Pfft, sold. So <laughs> this is, like, one of the arts of, like, uh, you know, doing business is removing the no. Right? Yeah. So if you go bring this thing to and try to convince the fish store to, like, buy it from you, you're going to probably have a big uphill battle. You but give if, it you, to them. if you go in there and say, this one's for free. If you sell it, I will replace it. But now after that one, man, we're gonna start making money. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that path, man. Make these things. You'll have all kinds of your artwork all over the place. It'll be super duper fun, mm. uh, and you're benefiting both the people that want a nice looking tank as well as you get to quit your job. Well, in the, I mean, down the road when you start to f see a whole bunch of success, uh, maybe it would be an idea to seek out like a, a tank manufacturer and partner with them, like. Hey, here's your you you had your tank built, you had your stand built, you want your aquascape included in there too? All right, mm -hmm. order it as a package deal. Mm. All right. Well, okay. So that's all of our things today. I got a special thing for you today. Woo. All right. So you're gonna want to do this. Yes. Next week we got something super super special. All right. It's gonna and be fun. It's gonna be at, at, at the end. And so I'm gonna tell you, go find. Uh, it's on. A lot of people don't know this exists. Yes. But on our page, uh, our, our like uh, YouTube channel page, there's a thing called the community tab. Okay, so if you're on the desktop, go to our homepage, bulkresupply.com, you'll find it, community tab. Mm -hmm. If you're on mobile, go to our channel from your subscription feed and then choose, when you get to our channel page, choose community tab, it's there. We're gonna give away some really cool starting. Then you wanna know where this is beforehand. Yeah. Uh, also, if you're just subscribed, you don't have to do all that nonsense. Uh, it will just actually send you It'll the show notification you in the feed. of what's coming up. It's yep. really cool. Yep. So, uh, I don't know. In that spirit, go check out the homepage here uh, and uh, we'll have another one of these next week. Maybe it'll Surprise. be the other 45. Surprise coming. Right. Peace. See you guys.